Hello. In this video, I will try to discuss some practical aspects why modeling practical integrator. First of all, as we know from this basic schematic for op amp integrator, that the integrator is a very simple circuit and known for all electrical and electronics engineers. Basically, it consists of op amp amplifier, resistor, and capacitor. This schematic can be found in all text reference book, websites, and many more references. But how we are going to improve this circuit in order to include the practical aspects? As a first step, we will go and model the op amp based integrator using MATLAB Simulink. So first of all, this is our first model in order to model the op amp integrator circuit. Going to basics, here is the op amp amplifier, here is the capacitor, and here is the resistor. As a basic configuration, this is our circuit. Now in order to connect this circuit for Simulink, we will add some blocks. First of all, here is a signal generator. In this signal generator, I configure it to generate a square wave with amplitude of 10 volts and a frequency of 60 Hz. Then this block is used only to integrate between power blocks and SIM electronics toolbox in MATLAB. It's only just or it's just only for interfacing purpose. Here there is a, this is a solver configuration and here is a voltage sensor in order to measure the output of the integrator and this block is working inversely as this block since this block will take the signal from Simulink environment and convert it to SIM electronics or SIM scale environment this one will do the reverse job it will take the signal from the SIM scale and convert it to Simulink Right now, I calculated the values of the capacitor and the resistor in order to make the output of 5 volt, which means the input will be a square wave with 10 volt amplitude and the output will be a 5 volt. Running this circuit, going to the score. Okay. Here in the uh, yellow line, we can see the input signal. It is a square wave with amplitude of 10 volts. The output, it will be the integration of the input signal, and it's also known for all engineers. It will be as a sawtooth signal with amplitude of 5 volt as per our configuration or as per the calculated values for the resistance and the capacitance. Now, going back to this circuit, this circuit in fact doesn't reflect the actual behavior of the op amp we know that the op amp usually will be supplied by positive and negative power supply and the output cannot be more than the input or the supply voltage of the op amp in this case we will go to our second model in this second model I added here another block called saturation. Saturation in this case will reflect the power supply saturation. So going to this block here the upper limit is 12 volt and the lower limit minus 12 volt which means I consider that the IC of the op amp is powered by positive 12 volts and negative 12 volts. So again I recalculated the values of the capacitor and the resistor in order to make the output of 15 volts which means the input signal will be 10 volts and the output signal will be 15 volts now running this model and this is right since the input signal 10 volts and the output signal is configured to be 15 volts here we can see the, the saturation effect of the power supply for the op amp IC 
So this is the first step in order to reflect the practical aspect of the op amp by adding the saturation circuit. Now the most important part that not discussed in detail in many textbooks and references that the uh, that is the residual voltage inside the capacitor. So let's take this model. I called it random integrator. So previously we assumed that the input signal or the square wave signal will start from minus 10 volt and will continue. Now let's run this model. It's same like the previous model with the saturation, but here I added some uh, modification to the input signal. Okay, here is the input signal, it's not regular as per the previous models. So at the beginning, it, it starts in normal mode, so the output was normal. Here is the interesting part of the integrator. The input was zero, but here we can see that the output of the integrator is still five volts. Still five volts. Now the question, those five or this five five volts from where it came actually it came from the residual voltage inside the capacitor because in electronic circuits usually we are trying to make the load connected to any circuit or the input impedance for any circuit to be as much as possible so it's not going to disturb the input signal so in this case, I consider that the load or the second circuit will be connected to the integrator. It will be with a high input impedance. This means the op amp actually will not see any load connected to it. So in this case, again, when the input is zero, the residual voltage inside the capacitor is appearing here. Now when the signal starts again, here we can see that rather than starting from zero, the integrator will start from five zero, because now the residual voltage it will be the starting point for the integrator. So we can see that the output is shifted from zero by five volts. Again, the input uh, the input is zero, and we can see the output of the integrator is ten volts. When starting again, so the op amp starting point or the integrator starting point rather than being zero now it starts from 10 volts so the output rather uh, the output trying to move to a higher amplitude but it would, uh, due to the saturation effect it cannot be more than it will volts now this practical aspect usually it's not considered during the design of any integrator now the question how we are going to remove the effect of the residual voltage inside the capacitor one of the ideas used in this field is called the resetting circuit resetting circuit means if you have a residual voltage inside a capacitor in order to remove this residual voltage the best way is by shorting the terminals of the capacitor but now how we can short the capacitor or the terminals of the capacitor while the capacitor already in operation so one of the use techniques we are going to connect a resistor with a switch by a switch we mean a transistor working as a switch in parallel with the capacitor so when we are uh, when we will close the switch the resistor will be connected to the capacitor since the resistance it will be less than the resistance between the input and the output of the op amp so the capacitor will start discharge its residual uh, discharge or voltage inside or through this resistor but the question when we will switch off or switch on this switch or the transistor. In the same technique, 
there is a resetting circuit the resetting circuit here it's working as a zero crossing circuit so as we can see from this configuration I took the input signal to something called resetting circuit the output is connected to the switch so the resetting circuit will control this switch or the transistor working as a switch when it will close and when it will open opening this resetting circuit it's a simple circuit consists of a three not gates and one and gate so what is the principle of this circuit the principle that when the input will be positive or changing from negative to positive let's consider it's positive so the positive will come to the not circuit the output will be zero zero going to the second stage the output will be one one going to the first stage the output will be zero and here so one zero one zero and here the one will come so one multiplied or and by zero the output will be zero but at the beginning we have to know that there is a delay a practical delay inside the AND inside sorry the NOT gates inside the NOT gates so when the signal will be changed from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0 this change directly will be or will be appear on the second terminal of the AND gate but this change it will take some time in order to be reflected on the first terminal of the AND gate so the difference between the time between the first terminal and the second terminal will create a pulse so actually when this will change in our circuit uh, uh, or in our design when we have a square wave input when the signal will change from the negative side to the positive side this delay will happen so the width of this circuit of uh, this pulse sorry or the output of this circuit it depends on how much the delay in the nut gates usually the delay is measured in microseconds so this is the reason why I put the three circuits in series in order to increase the delay again to our main circuit this means when the input will change from the negative side to the positive side directly the resetting circuit will issue a pulse circuit this pulse circuit will close the switch which means the capacitor will start discharging its residual voltage or a charge through the resistor so we are using the transition period from negative side to positive side from the input signal in order to discharge in order to, dis uh, to discharge the capacitor now this circuit is same like the previous circuit just we added the resetting circuit and let's remember how is the output from the previous circuit without adding the resetting one the resetting circuit again here is the input and here is the output so we can see the output is completely unwanted so going to our modified circuit after adding the resetting circuit let's see how it will act okay it seems here that the resetting circuit is working in a good way so at e let's zoom it a little bit we'll take this portion for example we can see here at the time of a transition from negative to positive 
from negative to positive we can see here the resetting circuit is issuing a pulse at the, at the time of issuing this pulse this means the switch will be closed and the capacitor will start discharging through the resistor we can see here that the DC component which already were, which already appearing in this model as uh, DC effect already removed so here the output signal is okay without any distortion but we can see that the DC component is, remo is removed so the DC component easily can be added to the output of the resetting circuit in order to remain the, the total output above or below the zero this means in positive side or in negative side but in the whole cases it is working in a good way so we can see in the whole running for the model that here the resetting circuit is working and the circuit is and the output signal is going back to its original position now another question will appear how I am going to select the resistor here in this model using the try and error method I found that the suitable is a suitable value of the resistance of 5 kilo ohm now let's try to increase it to 15 kilo ohm and everybody knows that increasing the capacitance this means the tau or the discharge time will be more so running again the circuit Okay. So after running the circuit and increasing the resistor connected in parallel to the capacitor, we can see that the discharge time is taking too much time. So in order to uh, in order uh, to get the output as per the required, we can see that we passed through a transition period. So in each pulse, the resistor will consume a little bit of the charge or uh, the residual charge inside the capacitor this is the reason that the sitting time is more than before now let's uh, try to reduce it rather than 15 kilo ohm I will make it 1 kilo ohm Okay, here is the second change. As we can see, since the connected resistor is less than before, this means the resistor will consume more energy or more the charge from the capacitor. This is the reason why we can see that the voltage or the output voltage waveform already distorted, which is unwanted behavior of our circuit. So by try and error, I found that the best value of this resistor is 5 kilo ohm. Again, running the circuit, we can find that everything is okay. Here we can see starting again. So the resetting circuit, and again, it's bringing the output signal to the desired position that's it hoping that this will clarify how we are, how we should introduce the practical aspects while modeling a practical integrator using op thank you